Hey, my dear friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today, we're out here on my favorite windy mountain road and we're testing the 2022 BMW 230i Coupe. New for this year, and this one's got a lot of the performance packaging on it. So, I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take it for a drive, and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. All right, my friends, before we get out on the drive, let's talk about what we've got. And I have a little bit of a housekeeping moment here. We have not had a BMW for a press car in a very, very, very long time. So if you watch our channel regularly, this might be a surprise to see this here. And the fact of the matter is, is that BMW just has not been in our local press fleet for some time, and they have finally joined the club. So I'm glad to welcome BMW to our car testing catalog. What we've got here, 2022 BMW 230i Coupe. This has the M Sport package, the premium package, and it also has the dynamic handling package. So what that gives us is a lot of stylistic and mechanical upgrades on this car that brings us to $46,000 and some change. When we look at the styling, it's all new for 2022, second generation two series. And they've actually made this car quite a bit bigger, believe it or not. It is 4.3 inches longer, 2.6 inches wider, and the wheelbase itself is two inches longer. That makes it almost the size of the original 7 Series when it first made its debut back in the 80s. Shocking! And this is supposed to be the smallest BMW coupe you can get. Uh, that's just the way these things go. Longer, lower, wider every time they redesign a car. And the styling itself, looking at the front, this has probably the most conservative grille that you're going to find on any BMW right now. A little bit more in keeping with the kidney grills that we've come to know over the years. It doesn't have the big, tall, vertical double Edsel grille that we're starting to see on a lot of the other BMWs, thankfully. At least not yet. With the M Sport package and the other packaging that we've got here, gloss black trim at the front, a unique lower front fascia, a little bit more aggressive. Coming around the corner, larger wheels and tires. 19-inch alloy wheels. You can see through them the M Sport brake package with the big red calipers. And these are, of course, staggered sizes, 225 at the front and 255 at the rear. Trim down the side, gloss black around the windows, and sort of a metallic finish gloss black on the lower rockers. And coming around to the rear, you can see that metallic gloss finish wraps into the lower rear fascia, which is unique to this car, and large dual exhaust tips. And they're the real thing not fakes like you find on, oh, I don't know, Audi and Mercedes-Benz. So kudos goes to BMW for keeping it real for the enthusiast. Up at the deck lid, a very subtle deck lid spoiler, tasteful, I think, and then LED taillights and a new pentagonal shape, which I'm not sure I'm really jazzed about, but I think they look better than the last generation. Stepping back and looking at the larger picture, I think this is a styling package that is definitely for the BMW purists that maybe grew up in the 80s and 90s and 2000s like me. Relative to the rest of the lineup right now, it is the most conservative in its presentation. The interior of the 2 Series Coupe is very much as expected, business-like in not only its equipment, but in its design. BMW interiors have always sort of had their own flavor and with that comes materials that you can have pretty basic like this, which is black plastic and aluminum trim all the way up to optioning with leather and burl wood. But here with the M Sport package and the premium package here, what we've got is a cockpit that's designed for functionality. I find that these seats are very comfortable. They're very supportive. They are power operated as expected in this price range, both for the driver and the passenger. I spent all day driving out in the desert for our shoot today, and I'm still quite comfortable sitting here. The seat material here is vinyl, which BMW calls Sensatec, and I find it is very much like leather, similar to how Mercedes-Benz has with their artificial leather. And quite honestly, I've had BMWs with leather in the past, and it probably wears a little better than that. It tends to look pretty rough after a couple of years, the leather does. So uh, I do find that they're pretty comfortable. They are heated here as is the steering wheel. Looking at the dash, this has the Live Cockpit Pro, which is part of the packaging on this vehicle, which is a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster ahead of the steering wheel, which is fully digital. And you can adjust that to have a number of different information sets on it. 
Above the instrument cluster is a head-up display, which is color, and it actually has a lot of good information on it, and I like the way that it sits just out there above the hood when it's properly adjusted, and I can wear my contact lenses where the dash might look a little bit blurry. That's sitting out there in the distance, and I can read that quite sharply. The steering wheel itself has metal paddle shifters, which are of a very high quality feel, and the steering wheel switch gear for not only that instrument cluster, but the infotainment system. Over here, this is a larger screen than standard as well. HVAC controls down below it, hard controls for the infotainment system there. Looking at the center console, this has a cubby that opens up, exposing cup holders and a place to put your phone. This has a wireless charger also. There's power ports down there as well. Just behind that, this is the puck for controlling the iDrive 7 infotainment system and electronic toggle shifter. And then just to the left of it, the start button, drive mode selectors, and the buttons for things like the auto start stop system. Storage inside here, not quite deep, but it is large enough to put a few things, phones. I have the sunglasses in there at the moment, and there's also some additional USB ports. The rear seat for the 2 Series is actually surprisingly roomy. With these seats adjusted for my height about 5'8", there's plenty of leg room for adults back there, and there is seating for two. There's even amenities back there. There's HVAC controls and vents, in addition to some USB ports. Looking at the trunk, you can see that it's actually quite roomy back there. A lot of space, a lot larger than I expected it to be. And the rear seats do fold down in a 40-20-40 split so that you can put long items through there, particularly in the center space such as skis or something like that. The quality of materials in here is not necessarily the best in the business. And I did find driving today that the steering wheel has some creaking in it. The plastic, some of the trims tend to rattle and creak when you're going over bumps and driving hard. This interior gets four out of five stars. The infotainment system here is nearly top of the line. We've got Harman Kardon audio, 464 watts and 14 speakers. And it has a full suite of features, including Sirius XM, Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and those are wireless. And it also has cloud-based navigation. The information that's displayed on the screen is done so in a very tasteful way. The graphics are good and crisp. It has a good backup camera. And the only thing that I really found that was difficult in living with it this week is that the structure of the menus and actually using it going back and forth and doing settings takes a lot of learning. There's a learning curve to this, but once you learn it, it works pretty good using either the puck here on the center console or the controls on the steering wheel. But if you like traditional controls, there's a volume knob right here, station presets on the bottom, and then you also have tuning buttons over here. So if you're kind of an old fashioned guy like me and like traditional hard controls, especially in the BMW nomenclature, you've got it right there. So I'm very pleased with this. The sound quality is absolutely great. And other than, you know, the strong learning curve, this is a much better iDrive system than anything that's come before it. The system gets five out of five stars. All right, my friends, now it's finally time to take a drive. What's under the hood here is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine, 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. And it comes mated exclusively here to an eight speed automatic transmission. But you know, if you watch my videos that the first question I always really like to ask is how does it go? So let me come to a complete stop here. Now I'm doing this in sport mode, but I'm not using the launch control because I want to see how it just works. So we're at a stop, hammer it, very slow response off the line, but now we're moving and 60. Now BMW says zero to 60 in 5.5 seconds. And I would bet that if you use the launch control so you don't get that drive-by-wire delay right off the line, that's where you're going to be. But power, very generous. This transmission works very well to kick that gear down. And you can also use these paddle shifters to shift manually. Now, another cool feature this has is sprint mode. If you pull this paddle on the left side and hold it down, it goes to the lowest gear possible and it dials all of your drive mode settings to the most aggressive, even if you're not in sport. So it's a nice feature to 
give you that extra passing power or that feeling of response if you're, say, on a highway and passing, or maybe you're just on the track and you like that, that feeling of having some level of control. I do find this engine has a very high level of refinement. It's very quiet for a four-cylinder. Usually four-cylinders don't have that smoothness that you might associate with the inline six here, and it doesn't quite have that, but it is very impressive. And the nice thing is, is when you start getting into switchbacks and curves, and this thing just really works nicely to hold your gear. This does have the in-sport differential, so when you throw power at it in a curve, coming out of a curve, you can really feel how that really kind of sets the rear end down. Now this does have an auto start stop system, which is not one of my favorite systems to have in any vehicle. It does have an off switch and that off switch is placed right next to the start button. So if you want to get into the habit of turning it off every time you get in the car, it's just a one, two step. Uh, the reason I do find it a little bit more bothersome here is first of all, I don't really think they belong in a performance car. If you want to put that in an SUV or some big luxury boat, that's fine. But the fact that it's here in a car that's meant to be enjoyed and driven by a purist, um, it just rubs me the wrong way. That said, this system is a little bit annoying because it is a four cylinder. It tends to shudder to a start, shudder to a stop, and it can be very disruptive to, I don't know, the mindset of driving in peace in the whole night. But I digress, you can turn it off. When it comes to fuel economy, this is rated at 26 city, 35 highway, and 29 MPG combined. That's a pretty impressive number for a big, heavy performance car like this. Um, that said, I didn't quite achieve that. I got 26 in my week with it, and well, the air conditioner was on, and I used this power prodigiously. You know, what can I say? Overall, though, um, I just wish this had a manual available. That's really my biggest peeve here. So when it comes to rating this powertrain, power is very good, refinement's very good, but it does tend to get a little bit rough when that auto start stop system kicks in and this automatic transmission, while very good, can sometimes be a disappointment, not necessarily always reacting the way you'd want it to. This powertrain gets four out of five stars. On the topic of handling, this is a car that I was very excited to bring up here to this road, specifically to see how sharp and precise this might be. And I wasn't disappointed. This does have a dual ball joint front suspension, strut suspension, and a multi-link rear suspension. This does have the adaptive steering, which means that it has a variable ratio, depending on speed, depending on what you're doing, that can speed up the steering ratio and give you a nice, easy turn in on tight corners when you're going slow like I am right now in parking. Uh, it's just a very well done system, and that's coming from someone that doesn't typically like these things but the fact that it works well and it's seamless is a good thing. The great thing is, is that you can throw this thing into a corner and this has the precise cut in of a scalpel. You could be a plastic surgeon in this car if the road were somebody's body, but you can feel the road. You can feel everything this car is doing and that to me is the essence of what you buy a BMW for. It's got a very stable refinement to it, which is to say that it's very hard to get this thing loose. You know, it's not only glued to the planet, but it doesn't feel like a big, heavy pair of combat boots out here on a rougher, windy road. It's got a finesse to it. It's got a refinement to it. It's got poise. I'm very impressed with this chassis. I love a chassis that's not only fun to drive, but does it in a way that makes you feel like you spent your money well. This chassis gets five out of five stars. Woohoo! I gotta tell you, my friends, this is a car that makes the hour and a half drive away from my home in downtown Phoenix up here to my favorite windy mountain road worth it. I could spend the entire day up here where the air is rarefied and there's no traffic. There's no traffic, there's bugs. <laughs> there's no traffic so let's talk about value here because you're spending the money to get to this place this is a car that you buy to enjoy places like this places like this were made for cars like this now forty six thousand dollars and some change this is the least expensive sports coupe you can get from bmw and there's not a lot of competitors here infinity with their q series coupe you can look at lexus with the rc 
And you can also look at Mercedes-Benz with the C. Now, a lot of those are a little bit bigger because they're really more in keeping with the 4 Series. This is the smaller option here and the less expensive one. And at this base price, not the most horsepower in the game, but you can get more power with this if you spend up into the M40. But this is a nice package. It's light, relatively speaking. <laughs> it's the lightest one and it's it's a very good handling car it's solid if you're a bmw purist like i consider myself right i grew up with three series cars i've owned a few of them 80s 90s 2000s and i'm always looking for the bmw that, that carries the torch for cars like that and this is it this is the one that really sort of has that bmw dna if you're really looking back at those days but it has all of the modern performance features and refinements that you could want. So talking about value here, uh, we look at quality, very good. Performance, very good. Handling, very good. And warranty coverage, four years, 50,000 miles, very good. Not the best in the business, but very good. So I put value here at five out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. I like it. I just wish it came with a manual. That's the only reason this car is not on my buy list because that's the one thing it's missing is a manual transmission. So sad. Anyway, if you like what we do, follow us on social media. You can see all of our links down there, Test Driven TV across the board. You can see our latest video right there. Better yet, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.